All right, so let's get this straight. Hassan Kim with two really costly errors that essentially cost the Padres three runs, but it's Mike Schilt's fault that the Padres lose this series and lose today in San Francisco. This is the wrap-up show with John and Jim. Let's get into it. Really disappointing series and Sunday specifically for the Padres who are coming home for a brief three-game series against the Cubs before heading back to the road. Make your way in, subscribe, smash the like button, Follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. We appreciate your super chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. Thank you for your memberships. Click join. You get emojis and badges. The Padres are two games under 500. Um, this thing appeared to be good as gold. Matt Waldron, very good. The bullpen started off very good as well. Uh, but Ha Sung Kim uncharacteristically committed a couple of errors, and the Padres lose today to the Giants 3 2 despite building a late 2 0 lead. They cannot hold on to it. First up, uh, let's get this video to what, John? 150 tonight? 150 likes? It's not a 200 like video because yeah, they didn't win today. Yeah, so yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's at least get this minimum to 150 likes tonight. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're watching this on replay, make sure hit that like button. Minimum 150 likes tonight. All right. Or this is the last show ever. <laughs> yes. Or we'll never do another wrap up show ever. Um, I I can't help but get deja vu. After today's game, not not because of what happened in the game, it's because of everything that's happened after the game from the bickering and the blame game and the it's this person's fault. It's that person's fault. And the people that are being blamed aren't the ones that are on the field. And specifically Mike Schilt. Does Mike Schilt have perfect bullpen management? Of course not. I mean, this is our first real time seeing Mike Schilt deal with a bullpen. Okay. Has it been good? No, but there's been some aggressive moves that I've liked, like Robert Suarez. Without Robert Suarez willing to go more than three outs, probably this team has two less wins this year. I think when you have to look at the whole, look at the whole picture here. Okay. Two? Did he go more than three outs more than one time? Is South Korea went four against the Dodgers. Okay, I was sleeping. I know. Um, you know, what did we talk about and hear a lot about from the fan base last year and Padres Twitter last year, John? Bob Melvin's fault. Bob Melvin doesn't know how to do a bullpen, but yet he led a team, you know, to an NLCS the previous year, and everyone liked his bullpen decisions then. Right, because they worked out, and then the next year it was it's Bob Melvin's fault. The guy sucks at managing a bullpen. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's the worst manager in the history of, of professional baseball. Period. Mm -hmm. And then today, I'm seeing a lot of the same things that it's Mike Schilt's fault. Why is he putting Johnny Brito in there in a, in a high leverage situation? Why is he taking Yuki Matsui out? But, uh, Mike Schilt doesn't know what he's doing. Mike Schilt sucks. Mike Schilt this. Mike Schilt that. Let me just remind everybody watching right now, watching on replay. One, is Mike Schilt a perfect manager? No, 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 no. Did Mike Schilt assemble this roster and assemble this bullpen? No, no, he didn't. If Hassan Kim doesn't drop an easy tag at second base, do they go to the ninth inning with the lead? And then does he go to Robert Suarez for three outs in the ninth to, to potentially win this game two to one? Yes. I don't know, with this game specifically, why everybody is pointing to the decision to have Johnny Brito in the game in that in that moment. If Hassan Kim holds on to the ball, they go to the ninth inning with the lead. It's that simple. Mike Schilt didn't drop the ball. Mike Schilt didn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, throw the ball over the first baseman's head. You know, today was a bad day for Hassan Kim defensively. He knows it. He'll tell you. But the fact that we are or not we, but I'm seeing on social media from, from a majority of Padres Twitter is that this game was because of bullpen management and Johnny Brito? Bro, you weren't watching the game. I mean, the one thing I would say, and you're 100% right, I mean, who cares if Yuki Matsui stays out there and then Hassan Kim commits an error? What does that have to do with Yuki Matsui? What does that have to do with Johnny Brito? The one thing I would say, if you want to be – questioning of anything that was not asked post game i don't believe by the media is 
did you consider not facing Matt Chapman after the game was tied on the air? Very valid. Well, Chapman hasn't done anything except kill the Padres. <laughs> right. I mean, he's absolutely killed the Padres. Now the season's so young, and the Giants, Giants have actually played less games than the Padres they, because they didn't play in Korea. I think he has eight RBIs against the Padres in seven games, and I don't even know if he's played all seven of those games. So he has really hurt the Padres. You didn't have to face him. Now he's hitting sub-200, but I think it's at least a fair question to ask. Did you consider working around Chapman? What were the advantages and disadvantages of doing that, but to your point, it's two. All I know is it should be two one in the bottom of the ninth inning, if not better than that, because Kim had an earlier error. So there was not an earned run that the Padres allowed in this game. So I don't understand how any of this could possibly be on Schilte. And Kimmy, by the way, who's quoted by AC post game, Ace Man Herpeter, who knows, you know, um, this is Kimmy today. I'm definitely disappointed, disappointed about the loss today. Hopefully I don't have things like this going forward. There's many more games to come, so I'm just going to try to prepare my best for the next game, which is good. He's basically taking you know, accountability. Schulte then saying super uncharacteristic out of Kimmy, which we realize. Um, so you take accountability and responsibility. It's on Hassan Kim, folks. They lost the game because of Hassan Kim. Who cares? It's I'm not saying they lost the season because of Hassan Kim. Why can't we just admit it? Hassan Kim cost them a game. It happens. That's what happened today. Yeah. And, and does that mean we're going to sit here and say Hassan Kim needs to be traded? Like, no. He's still a very valuable piece of this team. Everybody has bad games. We tell you like it is. If Manny makes two errors in the field that end up costing three runs, we would tell you that that's not good. It's just, it's the way this show operates. We tell you what happens. We're not going to sugarcoat shit. And just because a player is beloved by the fan base doesn't mean that he's exempt from criticism. Pretty simple. It doesn't mean that we we think Hassan Kim's a shitty player. It doesn't mean we think Hassan Kim needs to be cut or traded tomorrow or or whatever. He had a bad game. And if he does, yeah, if he holds and, the ball. He's had a bad season. Yeah. You know. Offensively. But it's only 12 games. But look, he holds the ball. They go to the ninth inning, 2-1 lead. Maybe more than that. You don't know. And you're giving the ball to Robert Suarez. You know, like. Yep. Now, now that's just in this game that we're talking about. The bigger picture is this offense. I mean, we did we call it or did we call it? It's going to, it's a problem. Um, and we can talk about how great this pitching, um, starting pitching has been, but at least the last turn here, you know, from Darvish on Tuesday to uh, Waldron today, but doesn't matter when you're two and three in those in the last five games of great pitching. If you don't, if your offense isn't going to score enough runs, it's, it's a it's, it's a problem. It's going to continue to be a problem. Yeah. It, well, what's interesting, and I agree with you. I mean, the offense is not a some well oiled machine, and you know Jackson Merrill deserves a ton of credit for the start he's had this year. Going great four game for today. today. Um, I mean, the fact that he's saying three twenty four is amazing. But with all that being said, what's interesting is yeah, the offense has been anemic, but you have lost two inexplicable games jim if you think about it you got cronenworth glove gate in korea who knows if they win the game but it was they, a tie they game a at the chance. time it was a tie game so chance. we don't know yeah but they have a better chance yeah and who knows if they win today but they have a lot better chance if by the way hasan kim in his career in the major leagues how many times has he dropped the tag play has it happened let's say one max. today <laughs> yeah. today so again, you're talking about a one in ten thousand play in Korea, followed up by a one in a thousand play today. It doesn't give you all the fuzzy, warm feelings about the 2024 Padres after what happened last year. And once again, in one run games, they're one and two <laughs> this year. And I, you know, it wasn't at Melvin. Well, Melvin's two and one or three and one or whatever they are in one run games this year. So, you know, it's not as simple as that. It's not all Melvin's fault that they lost one run games last year. It's not Mike Schilt's fault. They're one and two in one run games this year and you're right there's i was cautiously optimistic after four or five games about because of the offense and now i'm cautiously optimistic because of the starting pitching <laughs> but i just wonder if who they are is a team that again isn't fully rounded you know they got some good pieces and they have some areas that are huge concerns and that has already played out over these first 12 games well they're the i think it's a i mean it's pretty factual they're not a team that's well-rounded just because they still, you know, like it's just it's a factual statement. Um, mm -hmm. And like we said the same thing about Melvin and we said the same thing about a lot of these managers that have gone here through in and out of San Diego is like they're they're given what they're given. And when you look at the sheet 
of the rundown sheet of the the bullpen arms that that he has like he's sitting here like okay well this is what i got like i can't all of a sudden just be like you know what i want to go to someone else that isn't even here like he's given what he's given and he has what he has to work with you know they 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 made this huge trade for Juan Soto to get all these arms back one of them's in double a johnny brito's here stinking it up and then michael king has been he was great his last outing last night but you know um We'll yet to see, and Kyle Higashioka has had one g- game that has been good, but it's early for him. So, like, you know, you're given what you're given. And so when you have a, a Rule 5 guy in Kolick in the bullpen, like, what are, we, what are you supposed to do, not use him ever? Like, he's got, they're going to have to use these guys. And wasn't he good today? Kolick was great today. He, he started out like, oh, shit, here we go. And then he got out of that inning, and you're like, okay, escaped you know whatever type of damage potentially could have been done but that's a good like only ways these guys are going to develop and is like getting in these positions and like overcoming them like like you see jackson merrill today he was fucking fantastic at the plate and has he been good offensively this year been a lot of up and down but you know they're going to be giving these guys opportunities to get out of or get out of uh, whatever slumps they're in so look, do I have my issues with Mike Schilt so far? Like, yeah, I do. But what are your today, issues? Um, I mean, the bullpen, it's 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 gonna I think it's gonna be a roller coaster, right? And I, I think some things he said post game, I'm like, uh I mean that has nothing to do with in game stuff. That's more like just like a <laughs> things they said well, post game. Completely different. I mean, yeah, that that's I, I cannot honestly I cannot look back at his bullpen usage. I'm more I'd be more concerned with who he has in his bullpen than his bullpen usage. One hundred percent. So and and by the way, and today it has nothing to do with bull, bullpen usage. People will make it out to be bullpen usage. It has nothing to do with bullpen usage. Absolutely nothing. Zip yep. zero zilch. Yeah. Johnny Bruto's on the team. But yeah. <laughs> Johnny Bruto's on the team. Um, so he's gonna be used. And not and by the way, Johnny Brito should have gotten out of the jam to his credit. He spun a double play ball that was not turned effectively mm-hmm. by the Padres and Hassan Kim. I mean, how else can you spin it? I mean, you can say that this game was lost by the offense, but it wasn't. It was not lost by the offense. They led to no. nothing. Without errors, they likely win the game to nothing. Even with one error, they could win the game two one. I mean, you know, I, I really don't I mean Schilt went to Robert Suarez for a five out save and accomplish that. That's honestly, if anything, I'd give him positive reviews for what's happened so far with the bullpen because of something like that, that most teams probably wouldn't do on April 3rd. Yeah. You make a good point. Like he's given, I mean, you should have, who should more he have turned to, you know what I mean? Like who, where, yeah. where's the example? Like, I think people need to once again, direct this anger and frustration with with what's happening with this bullpen to start this season to the person that assembled this bullpen so far for the first two weeks of the season i was flat out wrong i thought this bullpen would be fantastic yeah, it's just been bad now robert suarez i think has been really good um he has done things that you haven't seen a padres closer do here in a long time fantastic i think yuki matsui fantastic i think um Wandy peralta has been good I think De Los Santos, besides this the other night, has been good. All right. Mm-hmm. Kolick looked good today. Mm-hmm. I think the only one in the bullpen where you're just like, oh, God, Johnny Brito, right? Maybe Kolick to an extent, but he's not, he's, he's been mostly putting games that they've been trailing besides today, and he came through today. Yeah. I'm honestly, I'm not even worried about Brito. I mean, maybe using him in really high leverage spots like he was asked to be in today, but you can't turn to Robert Suarez. You might say, John, well, why not? give Yuki Matsui, who only threw seven pitches, the next couple of batters. I mean, you could have, but what if something would have transpired there? And you can't typically pitch guys multiple innings a lot. So, like, how many outs are you going to get out of relievers typically? Three is the answer. So when you get four, you've usually gone above and beyond. This had nothing to do with taking Matsui out of the game. Do we understand that? We don't know what happens if Matsui stays in the game. Yeah, I think people, uh, again... They are, once again, not looking at the whole picture here and directing blame 
solely on just the manager's shoulders. You know, when, 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 when Mike Schilt fucks up, like, we'll let you know, like, we'll mm-hmm. tell you he has, oh, yeah, yet. I will absolutely do it. I mean, he has he, not, yeah, like, his post game comments are a little cringe, but that, that has nothing to do with what's going on on field. Let's get to some of these supers yeah. that are rolling in Ishmael. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. If Ish. you're here, thank subscribe. You. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers. Um, and the Padres aren't helping. So please subscribe if you're here. <laughs> uh, smash the like button. We're trying to get to 150 likes on tonight's video live or on replay. Uh, if you're on X, at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. And thank you for your support of the channel with these super chats. We get to every single super chat. Just click the dollar sign below the chat box. Great way to support our work. So Ishmael says, hey, guys, I think we should still be calm. And I would completely agree with that. Uh, there's positives compared to last year. Hopefully. Uh, we're second behind the Dodgers. I'm more concerned with Manny. I mean, the, the division and the race and that that to me were way too early to even have a conversation about that. Um, but I would say still to be calm because it is 12 games and it's not like they've had the doors blown off them in these no. 12 games. There's been some unfortunate losses, that's for sure. But it's not time to jump off anything 12 games into the year. No, um, I'm not concerned about Manny at all i just think that he has to be better like he just i mean just you know you're hitting 196 this year yeah gotta be better how in be 205 at the plate gotta be better yeah. um it's just we talked about it their schedule coming up here it's tough it's a tough schedule for the rest of this month um you know there, there's not really a soft patch in here and honestly when you get to next month the next soft patch, quote to say, so to say, mm-hmm. is a three game series at home versus the Rockies. But then guess what? You were right back on the road versus Atlanta and Cincinnati. And then you take on the Yankees when you come home. And then Miami, you can consider that a soft patch. But like for the next almost two months here, it, these are all going to be tough games. Mm-hmm. They just are. You know, you got Chicago this week at home. You got, then you go on a road versus the Dodgers in Milwaukee. And then, you know, you come home versus Toronto, but then you're right back on the road to Colorado where you just can't win ever. Like, it's just a really hard place place for this franchise to play. You finish off the month with Philadelphia and Cincinnati, like two teams that are going to be in contention. The team has very little margin for any error. And when you lose these types of games, it just, it just feels like a double loss because they need every single win they possibly can have this year. They can't be giving away games like this, especially when the dude has a bag on a player at second base and the ball, you know, flies out of his glove. Like what? Yeah. For like the second time this year, something stupid like that has happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, Richard, thank you. He says the 2023 team was unlikable. Uh, this year's has old fashioned blue collar players, grinders, King, Merrill, Cronenworth, Hassan Kim are a pleasure to watch. It, it may be true. May, maybe some of that is accurate. I think results are results. If this team goes 80 and 82 or 82 and 80 and doesn't make the postseason like last year, to me, it's the same thing. Regardless of who's on the team, I had no issues with the team last year, especially if they would have won. It didn't look as good because they lost. So I'm not going to take solace in, well, I got good guys. You know, I got grinders. Yeah, they went 80 and 82, but man, Merrill at 299. Do people really care? I mean, I don't think they do. I don't think people at the end of the year are going to be thrilled with that. Last year's team a lot of stuff coming out of that clubhouse in print. It was, it was hard to get past like quitting, right? Like effort mm-hmm. egos. You're like, are you serious right now? But if they won 84 games, made the postseason, and like made a trip to the NLCS, everyone would have been oh, be like, flipped. Oh, it's one of the great flipped. teams ever. Script flipped. Mm-hmm. They overcame. Right. Mm-hmm. Same thing with this year's team. I, I, I like Jackson Merrill a lot. Okay. I've, I've always liked Hassan Kim. Well, I've liked where Hassan Kim has gotten to. Um, Jake Cronenworth is a guy that started out red hot and kind of fizzled, but he's had a nice year so far. You like all these players. Um, they're all, I mean, every baseball player is technically a grinder. That's what baseball is. It's a grinded out sport. It's the, one of the most mentally taxing sports out there because of, I mean, you're going to fail more than you succeed. This is how it is. Mm-hmm. But Guess what? If this team does, like you said, John, if this team doesn't make the postseason this year, everyone's going to hate this team. Because yeah, that's basically, like the only that's like maybe, maybe hate's a strong word. They're just not going to remember this team. 
like they're not, they're not going to in five years be like, man, did you guys remember? Do you remember that 81 win Padres team in 2024? Wow, that was fun. Oh, wait, they missed the postseason. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I agree. Um, JMR, thank you for the super chat. He says, I don't know if I can watch another year of 101 ways, impossible ways the Padres lose. Hashtag frustrated AF. I mean, that really is who they are. I mean, they even put a graphic up there in the ninth inning, maybe like worst records in one run games since 2023, which to me is a little unfair to put that graphic up there for the 2024 Padres who are one in one coming into the game, but they had the worst record in baseball since 2023 in one run games. Yeah, that's because they were historically bad last year but it does seem like in a very short period of time i mean it's april 7th it seems like they've had some head scratching inexplicable losses like how many teams have had multiple one in 500 one in a thousand type like moments that the Padres have already had this year there can't be many just yeah new ways to lose new ways to lose yeah. the ball going through your like literally going through your glove and then another one that you just can't hold on to it making a tag Right. And 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 Solaire didn't do anything to obstruct the ball. Nothing. He just slid. In fact, and he didn't even know the throw was coming from behind him. I mean, he didn't know that uh, um, they got the out at first, or he knew nothing about the play. He was just running. Yeah. So that that is sit I mean, behind you, him. If if Soler pushes his hands up yeah, or, or whatever, yeah. none of that. It was a clean. Just Kim dropped the ball. And how many times has Kim dropped the ball? That's like the like you said. That's like probably know. the first time that he's ever done that. At least we've seen. I mean, if it's happened, it hasn't happened more than like one other time in four seasons, you know? So that's a, that's a rarity, you know? Uh, JD's third, thank you, man, for the super. He says, no series wins. That's right, to this point. Offense yeah. in 2023 form, Mike, I'll say Schilt, is a cheerleader and hands out trophies, lost a ton of talent that wasn't replaced, 75 to 79 wins at best. I would just say this one thing about the offense, and I agree, it's been lackluster. Any guesses where they are in OPS in baseball? top of the top of the list one of the more or close to the top of the list 10th 10th okay so i mean yeah it like that much it's power. probably skewed by 15 runs in korea um but yeah. if you're going to take out 15 runs in korea then you have to take out you know two runs against san francisco if you're going to take out 13 runs against the giants you got to take out a you know one run performance somewhere else but no. they have my point is they haven't been anemic you may think it's been anemic it hasn't been anemic you can say it hasn't been good here over the last handful of games but it hasn't been this isn't the 29th best offense in baseball it might be a middle might be in the no. middle of the pack but this is not the 29th best offense in baseball it's not it at times feels a little bleak. it can feel like it <laughs> you know like yesterday they had one significant hit and that was mm -hmm. in the first inning Yep. Now it didn't matter because because exactly Mike, Michael King was fantastic last night. Right. That's why I'm always like people are like, well, no, this is on the offense. I'm like, no, what about yesterday? I mean, it's on the offense. You I mean, know, if more you score often more than, runs than the opponent. More often than not, they score four runs and they continue to get close to this pitching for the most the majority of the year. They're gonna win a lot of games. That's just how it's gonna be. Because if King's gonna pitch like that. Not every time out, but if he's going to pitch that effectively and you can rely on Darvish, Musgrove, and Cease to give you those outings consistently this year, they're going to have a couple clunkers for sure. And the offense is going to have to pick them up. You know, and you get this today from Matt Waldron, right? And you just you just need to score four runs. Like, that's the number. Three runs, you're, gonna, you're pushing it. Two, you're really pushing it. But four, you feel pretty good about yourself with this team and this, this starting pitching. It's I felt great like, about two. I felt great about two runs today. Yeah, I thought uh, it. It felt like such like. I thought the game was over. Two after the game was over, you're like, wait, they lost. Yeah, exactly. Like, it happened so fast. Yes. So, yeah. I mean. Yeah, my point is like, there's the. It's not just you can't pin this all on the offense. Whether you want to do that for this five and seven start or today, I mean, it's the Padres guys. You think they're going to have a top four offense in baseball? You think they're going to San Francisco and playing at Petco and they're going to have like a top five offense? It's not going to happen. It's just no. not. Um, and by the way, how many times have you said they need to win games three two? Guess what? They're losing games three two. That's what happened today. They got to win those games. Uh, Ishmael, thank you. If the season continues like this or ends like last year, is it time to let go of a top four? I'm assuming a top four hitter in the lineup. I mean, how do you do that? You got non tradable contracts, Bogarts, Machado, Tatis. Who else is in this top four? 
Cronoworth. Oh, Crony. No, I mean, none of these guys are going anywhere. None of these guys are going anywhere. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. The only person that might be going somewhere is Hassan Kim because <laughs> he's a free agent at the end right. of the year. So yeah. I, I don't and think anyone's going anywhere. Schilty's thrown out the same lineup like every day, but pretty much. Yep. Yep. Um, and we talked about it the other night and we were, were going over like, where do you, where would you put these guys? Like, how would you make the lineup if you were Schilty? I mean, do you put more onus or pressure on Merrill? Do you move him into like the one or two spot? It seems a little early for that. Everything's working. Why fix it from his perspective? I'm uh, not do you touch, move Bogarts, I'm not, do you move Bogarts down Merrill. because he hasn't done anything I'm from a power Merrill. perspective? If Merrill is continuing to Well, they to moved do this. Merrill today, right? He batted eighth, I think. Because Higashioka was in there, right? Yep. I'm not moving Merrill. I'm keeping him. I'm keeping him where he's at. He's, it's, if, yeah. it's, if it's broke, don't fix it. And mm -hmm. he's still 20 years old, even though he had an amazing game today. Four for four, stolen base, played solid defense in center field. Like, just keep him there. And if he is a guy in the future that you consider the top of your lineup, then you make that move. But I, I just, you know, to put all this pressure on Jackson Merrill at the start right. of this year, you're like, damn, dude. I mean, maybe he can handle it. I don't know. But that's just a lot to me to it make him like a leadoff hitter. Yeah. Why are you? Why are you moving the two hundred seventy million dollar acquisition to go? I mean, the two hundred seventy million dollar acquisition has to perform. <laughs> That's more important, it. I would think. For the team, you can't hide them. Yeah. Um, HBVV, thank you, man. He says uh, should have signed Bellinger. Is this who's Randon? Are we talking about Rodon? Who's Randon? Is not a grinder. But I agree, Randon is not a grinder. And what Randon. would Bellinger? I mean, no, I, Bellinger doesn't fix this. Maybe um, he does. It's not the end all be all. You have Bellinger, then you don't have Cease. Really? Yeah, because he's making way more than Dylan Cease is making, and they haven't taken on any salary. In fact, if you added Bellinger, you'd have someone else go on, would be my guess. How much is Bellinger making this year? I think he's 25 like 20 something yeah no chance um you don't get me wrong though bellinger in this lineup would look pretty good let's like all this like Luis rise in this lineup would look really good great you're not gonna see him in this lineup and if you do it'll be three and a half months from now i take that back bellinger in this lineup would look better than the lineup they have now i don't know if it would be like a, the greatest lineup in the history of professional sports right but like it still would you're still adding a guy that so yeah Cody power Bellinger guy like you meet you need yeah, I mean, he's been quasi-productive to start the year. Nothing to write home about. And he is making $30 million this year. There was no, yeah. It was never happening. So it it's, like, never it, it's like if you sign Bellinger to $30 million a year, why do you just keep Soto? You just kept Soto. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Ritad, thank you. He says, do you think Schilt was dreaming of coaching in the opposite dugout? Maybe when they were playing the Cardinals. <laughs> I don't think so. No. Uh, but thank you. Uh, Legend of the Fall, thank you for the super. He says, Kim should have been traded this offseason, to be honest. As opposed to Soto? <laughs> That's what, this, this, is one of those comments of, this is one of those comments of like... <laughs> because he uh, cost in the game. <laughs> yeah. You're just upset. Like, come on, give me a break. A month and a half ago, if you, said, if you traded Hassan Kim, this whole entire fan base would riot. And they right. lose a really good player, you know? Yep, I agree. Uh, that one, Homie's Garage. Thank you, man. He says, what sucks is these games that they do enough to win but can't close it out. This team can't afford these losses. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. There's some games where you're like, they did enough to win and they just didn't win the game. It's like they, they, um, yeah, I don't know. They, it's like they, they did everything in their power not to win the game. They're doing things to not win. Today's a really good example of that. Yeah, it's it's, it's a like game. The, this wasn't stolen from them. It's like the Giants didn't do much, right? They just took advantage of errors. Giants didn't do shit. Giants, yeah. Giants are I don't know what the Giants, but like yeah, you think just, Rogers have a bad offense. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think here. So to start this season, I would count today. I mean Friday maybe and Tuesday of last week 
Like these are like you don't want these games to start piling up. Where... What happened Friday? Friday it was um the walk off in the ninth off De Los Santos. Did they lead that game prior? They led two one heading to the bottom of the sixth. They Giants tied it up in the bottom of the sixth. And then um the Padres or sorry, the Giants walked it off in the ninth. Padres yeah, led two one. These, yeah. You gotta win these games, you lead two one. Cause he, like you, you made a great point there. Uh, that one's homie's garage is is you get to a point where you start looking back and you're like, oh, there's one lo- one loss that they could have won. There's a loss that they could have won. There's a loss that could have won. And and with it being so tight and with every win meaning so much to make the postseason this year, like potentially at the end of the year, you could look back at this game if they don't make it and go, there it is. There's you know there's an example, right? Depending on what happens at the end of the season. Sure. I mean, every team's gonna have a a shit loss. I mean, all of them. Everybody. It just seems like the Padres have more than some of these other teams. They just have they. Ha- they feel like they have these losses that are just so, like a, back breaking. They're kind of baffling. Like what? You're like what the fuck? You like just gave happening? them that. I mean, you gave them. Yeah. That I mean that eighth inning thing is ridiculous. I mean, tell me how many times that's not executed in college. And that's nowhere near the level. That's not a, hey, how many points does Caitlin Clark score if she's in the NBA? I mean, that plays executed in college. That plays executed in high school. I mean, if you it's play high school baseball, by, you know. It's probably executed by you, John. If they gave you the – I played high school the, baseball, and I it could have executed it. Like, all right, John, here's a glove. The ball's in the glove, and you're in front of the runner. You tag the runner. I mean, and it wasn't a bang-bang. I mean, he had time well, to I field think- and tag. It was so much time. It happens. We're human beings. I, I mean, again, people make mistakes, but why can't we just say that? It was a mistake, and that's why the Padres lost the game. RH, thank you. He says PTSD. Padres, traumatic stress disorder. It's very good. Lord, it's been a lot of that recently. Andrew, thank you. Hope all is well in Korea. Um, Kim had half the RBIs today. We're saying for the Padres, he had one. Was it a sack fly? No, it was a single in the... Uh, what was it? It was the sixth. Oh, yeah. I had him an underdog and I needed a run score and he had a freaking RBI. I was like, gosh darn it. I know. Um, okay. That's great. That's good. Um, that one, Homie's Garage saying Friday, Cease only two walks scored and winning run got on base with a hit by pitch. Cease is fault. <laughs> Cease is fault. Thank you. That one, Homie's Garage, <laughs> HBVV. A Rendon Bob must be sliding down Coca Cola slide right now. What are you drinking, HBVV? You want something tonight? You're on a little. No, I want some. Whatever you're drinking tonight. Uh, we'll get back to the chat in a moment, um, guys. Please support our partners, including our title sponsor here on the Wrap Up Show, our longtime supporter of the channel. He's been with us since day one. Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you have any insurance need, let Mark help. He's going to save you money. I've got a homeowner's earthquake and life insurance policy with Mark. He's a great insurance agent. You can take it from us. He will save you money. This is his website. Click the link in the description down below. You can get free quotes online or free quotes by calling Mark. I'll talk to you about saving money on your insurance. Also about the Padres. He's a lifelong Padres fan. He's a native San Diegan. Um, he's just a huge supporter of this channel and he is our title sponsor and has been since day one. So if you have an auto home life insurance, business, earthquake insurance, condo or renter's insurance need, whatever it is, let Mark save you money before you renew your insurance policy, get in contact with Mark. If you support our channel, please support Mark Nimitz at farmer's insurance. Yep. All his information is down below there in the ticker, his phone number, and his email address, mnimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to our buddy Mark, let him know that John and Jim from the wrap up show sent you. Just real quick on something like this from great friends like Giants play better than the Padres. They're a good team that took advantage. I don't think so. I, I think this was ha- this was gifted to them. This was silver platter stuff. Like I, I didn't I've watched seven Padres Giants games. I don't think the Giants are better than the Padres, even though they're four and three against the Padres. Who disagrees? And, and like you said at the start of the show, if you want to then go to the next argument of why did they pitch to Matt Chapman, you could go there. And then if you want to put some blame on Mike Schilt, then you can go yeah, there. Yeah, that's the that that's at least a question. But 
Um, by no means is this game number one on the blame chart, Mike Schilt. Like that no, decision like after- is a decision that you're going to have to talk about, but like it's not the reason why they lost. Right. I mean, Chapman's been bad, although he's hit the Padres, as we know, although it was really one game, right? He had that huge the RBIs game. RBIs versus the Padres. But six in one game? Wasn't yeah. that something crazy? Five in one game, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and then Estrada behind him has has been flat out horrific. I mean, just horrific. And so is Yastrzemski. He's just been worse than horrific. Right. I guess you could. I no, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, you could absolutely not pitch Chapman in that spot, a two two game, and we'll never know what would have happened if you faced Estrada or Yastrzemski. Um, but that's at least a, a question, I guess you could ask. I guess the what we have to remember is like we talked about this earlier in the year. Like there's some real good indicators, like you said, the last turn through the rotation. That's encouraging. Um the offense the first handful of days was encouraging. The bullpen's been bad. The bench I'm not overly encouraged by. But, I mean, you get good pitching, you should be fine. I mean, I think if your rotation is going to be top five rotation in baseball, I don't know if it will be. Last year it was, and they weren't great. But, I mean, if if King, Cease, Musgrove, Darvish are good, you're going to give yourself a chance to win a lot of games that they're losing. These three, two type games, you have chances to win and hopefully they take advantage of that. But the, the starting pitching has been pretty encouraging over the last week. They're two and three in those five starts. I know, but that's not, I mean, but they're going to make 30 starts, you know? I know, I know. But like, it goes back to the point of when you get this good pitching, you need to be at least three and two in those starts. Yeah, I would agree with that. You can't be two and three a bunch. And mm-hmm. um, it, it, just, it just doesn't get easier in the immediate future right now for this team. doesn't. Yeah, um, like, right, Cubs for three at home and then back to the road for six. I mean, Cubs are six and three. So Dodgers they're not the Dodgers. Start. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, this is not my entire bobble collection. Ivan, it's just the ones that I choose to display for you guys. I have a whole bobble collection over there on the wall, and in and in there. But yeah, how many? Um, two, four, six, eight. I got fifteen over there. <laughs> Look at you. I probably have six or seven. That's just that are in storage yeah. here. Okay. But I have you know the Hassan Kim. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. and Don and Mud. I thought those were pretty, very cool, worthy. Ivan says you're lying. No, I'm not going to show you right now. <laughs> um, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully Machado on Wednesday does something productive. Like Rich says, you'll get a new Machado one on Wednesday. Here's the thing with Machado: we always say this, like you said, and I agree. He's got to perform. He's making a lot of money. It's hard to go that far in on Machado because you know what's going to happen. Like He's going to have a two-home run game. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a good week. All of a sudden, you're going to look up. He's All of his numbers are going to look better. And then who knows? Then he goes into a slump for seven days or ten days, and you say, man, he do better, and then he has a good week. Um, It has been less than, you know, ideal, his start. I mean, let's be fair. I know Kevin Acey wrote today that they hope to have him back in the field this month. Um, But offensively, I didn't I really didn't think about the idea that the the elbow could could hurt him, and I don't have any clue if it is or not. But he's gotten off to a another bad start, which has happened before. If you followed his time as a Padre, it's just he. Everyone knows Machado's going to get his numbers, but he knows what he has to do, and he knows he has to be better for this team for the whole season. Mm-hmm. And when you just are doing stretches where you're unbelievably hot, that's great. But, you know, the consistency. And uh, you, you need to be more consistent for this team throughout the entire season instead of just giving this team two two and three-week stretches that are spanned out in a lo- – like, you know, like tomorrow. Tomorrow against the Cubs at home. Machado's going to have to go on a hot streak. I just feel like yeah, this you got, you offense got, needs more than two runs tomorrow. I, yeah. I I agree with that. Like, just can we go on a hot streak? A couple guys, not just one. Like, can we get have like a Manny and a Tatis just like kind of just taking over? You know? I'm with you. 
Like they, they need um, big numbers from these guys. They just do. Like uh, HBVV, thank you for the super. It says uh, Toddy needs to hit ball more. Yeah, and his fashion less. I got no issues with the fashion. I I actually like it. Um, here's Tatis's last four games. Uh, St. Louis 0 for 2, 2 walks with an RBI. At San Francisco, 1 for 4, single RBI. At San Francisco, 1 for 4, single. Today at San Francisco, 1 for 4, single. Again, super small sample size. His overall year has been solid. I am really hoping for a big year for Fernando Tatis Jr. A big year. I think he's had a good start. Hasn't had a perfect start. But um, I really want to see that. Big year. And speaking of who could use a nice series against the Cubs, Fernando Tatis Jr. Could you they gotta get these guys going? The Bogarts, Tatis, Machado grouping. I mean, you gotta be winning games with these guys, right? These guys should be winning games for you. There should be a game that Tatis hits two home runs. There should be a game Machado hits two home runs. There should be a game where Bogarts has six total bases. You gotta have these guys win games for you. That's why they're here. One of their um biggest like i guess points for this season to, is the stars have to be bet like they believe in the stars and, and last year they kind of put a lot of blame on like oh our stars didn't just didn't perform you know like no bad luck blah blah, blah. like stars just didn't perform and they're putting a lot of emphasis on these guys to perform this year by not making any significant moves to improve the lineup in fact they made significant moves to make the lineup worse. <laughs> True. So, like, it's just it's as simple as night and day. Is the stars are going to have to perform? You're going to have to get good years out of Bogey, Toddy, and Manny, or you're not making the postseason. Plain and simple. You can't you can't be sitting here being like, well, you know, if Profar does this, even though he's been good, or Campisano and Kim and Cronenworth, like, yeah, those guys need to to do well too. But it's like they're not shouldering the load, and nor they shouldn't. Manny, Tatis, Bogey. Got to be better. I agree. Um, this is hard for me to fully read, Joshua, but thank you for your support of the channel. Um, I'm Thanks, sure a Joshua. lot of people what's it, have Alt Saints SD. This, but it still feels like this offense has no fight, no fire lit under their ass. No one is card of this team hard on this team part of i don't exactly know you could follow up with it on super josh if you want to are you and saying we we're not hard it? are you saying we're not hard on this team oh no scared scared mm. of this team oh no one is scared of this. No one yeah is scared i buy that I, yeah, I would I, I don't know about no one i mean i think they have some formidable hitters in their lineup but i, I kind of buy that yeah yeah you know but thank you josh for your support thanks, of the channel thanks, if you want to follow up we can we can get to it uh, Andrew, thanks. His only bobble, oh my gosh, is of Chris Denorfia. You should buy a bobble on Foco. Yeah, then exactly. You really should. And use right. promo code wrap up show 15 and get 15% off. And click the link in the description down below. That's what you yeah. should be doing, Andrew. Yeah, I would get a bobble head, yeah. Okay, RH, thank you for the super. He says, I have a very reliable media source. Ooh. <laughs> that says Press wants AJ out. Well, then why didn't they just get rid of him? last year when they could have uh the signs are forming connect the dots if this team continues to fail aj goes sooner than later he is literally hated inside well then why didn't they just get rid of him yeah i don't need anybody to tell me that aj preller is probably on the hot seat this year because i hear what eric Asenda said and that's all i need to, that's all i need to hear right you know um and we've watched this team you've watched this team cover this team for Shit, damn near. I've almost covered the team for damn near a decade. Mm -hmm. All AJ Preller has been here. Um, and I've said it last year. I thought last year was the time to move on. But I mean, yo, if you don't make the postseason this year again, <laughs> I don't know what like three strikes you're out. I mean, that's it. It's over. So yeah, no one has to tell me anything. No reliable sources or what comments yeah, whatever he's not like going we, anywhere we until know the end of the season where he might be going somewhere you know? right he's the general manager of this team for this season and he's not going to be fired in season unless this team goes like horribly off the rails right but um you don't want to see it all right i mean this team no. will be 19 games under maybe I'm not, not 
I'm not sitting here saying like I wish they would make don't make the postseason so they fire AJ Preller. Like I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if they don't make the postseason, then they will fire AJ Preller. That would if be my guess. I mean, if they don't make the postseason, excuse me, if they make the postseason, then AJ Preller will be the general manager. Yeah, I agree with that. Thank you, RH. We're going to get back to the chat in a moment. Someone wants to ask Jim about WrestleMania, which will allow me to go get water. Um, but <laughs> thank you to our partners here on the wrap-up show, including our friends over at Aura. Their co-founder, Will, is a huge supporter of our work. And this is a great, great company that both Jim and I have been taking products from Aura for now years at this point. I take a probiotic for digestion. It's an amazing product. You should as well. They've got a great probiotic. All of their products are plant-based, every single one of them. They have proteins for after workouts. They have pre-workout supplements. They have omega-3 oils. If you're taking a fish oil, you can take the omega-3 oil from Aura. They have sleep pills, immunity pills, and much more. Shop at ORA.organic or by clicking the link in the description down below. They've got offices right here on Liberty Station. Everyone wants to get healthier. So if that's the case, check out the plant-based supplements from our friends at Aura at ORA.organic. Yeah, if you need some supplements to help you make you look uh, like Roman Reigns or, or Cody Rhodes or or, uh, <laughs> or, or, you know, anybody else, right? Like, yeah, it's not, it's not it. Or, you know, <laughs> if you're a woman out there, you want to look like Rhea Ripley, like, or is the best place to go for supplements to make you, um, to give you a healthy lifestyle, um, to help with your workouts at protein powders. It's fantastic for after workouts, after pre-workouts, uh, for before the workouts that you can take probiotics for good gut health. Um, they have all of it. Go to www.ora.organic and you can uh, pick up some supplements and uh, thank us later. I'm getting water. Feel free to chat away. <laughs> Dude, WrestleMania night two. Just a quick 60 seconds. I know there's not a lot of people are like, Jim, shut the shut up, right? That was epic. Epic. I bet you a lot of people in the chat right now have at least watched at least one form of WWE before. And tonight, the main event was just pure. It was just perfect. It was the most overbooked, insane, like what the hell's going on matches ever. And Cody got his moment and everyone lost their freaking minds. It was perfect. I mean, even the ring announcers like crying, announcing Cody as the winner. It was, it was fantastic. It was, it was a great moment. It was an epic match. Night two was a lot better than night one, but um, knocked it out of the park. Triple H is the man. Um, well, I'm just writing back to a text. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I text so last night. I don't even know. Jim was maybe talking about WrestleMania. So I went to Twitter and I searched for the word WrestleMania, and then I saw like what people were saying and i copied the text from people's tweets and i sent them to jim i was like are you and he was like super confused i, I was like double check it was you H not a friends. roman reigns on like a triple punch and he's like wait what <laughs> i don't know what the hell i said but you were like you said something about like the rock and i'm like i i i, yeah. I kid you not i you saw were, the text yeah and i i looked to make sure that it was actually you that texted me that's so funny i was like what? Let me find what, what I is this said. From John? I want to find what I said. I sent it to Brent. I know. It was cool. dumb. Brent's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody cared. All right. What the hell? Brent will reply to our text like 30 hours later. All right. Hey, did you guys see that the Padres lost today? Like, yes. <laughs> He'd be like, did you see uh, Cal Perry's going to Arkansas? Like, yeah, we saw. Yeah, we saw. Um, we saw. <laughs> oh, wait. Here, here, I put... um. Crying at Cody, immediately turning his head towards Triple H, L M A O O O, and you said, "Wait, huh?" And then I said, "Feel like I'm back in the Attitude Era, the People's Elbow." <laughs> That's when I. And knew. then he goes, "Are you copying tweets and sending them?" I said, "I'm just copying and pasting tweets." LOL. Yeah. When you, <laughs> you drop the like People's Elbow and Triple H, I'm like, "Huh? <laughs> what?" I don't know, man. All right, let's get back to some of these supers. Appreciate you guys being here. You got to subscribe. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers. Please subscribe. We need to get to 150 likes. I don't think we've gotten there as of yet. Close to 100. So just push that okay. maybe over 100 likes. There's over 200 plus people in the chat right now. If you're watching and you haven't already, hit that like button. It's all we ask. Um, and also subscribe as well. It's uh, quick. Just boom, boom. Click, click. 
Boom, boom, click, click. Click, click, uh, boom, boom. Appreciate it. He says, uh, Peter kept AJ. He protected him. That's why he is still here. You know this to be true. Of course um, I know it to be true. <laughs> Duh. Well, that, that's, but we know two things. I mean, we read what Kevin Acey wrote July 1st of 2023, that we don't make changes to make change, and that Seidler is very loyal to Preller. And then we heard what Eric Consenta said the first day of spring training this year, which was we're all accountable, including AJ Preller. So yeah, we we, I mean, we all agree. RH, if they miss the postseason, he's out. If they make the postseason, he's going nowhere. I don't care what they think of him inside the organization. If this team makes the postseason, get ready for another couple of years of AJ Preller as general manager. So it doesn't matter um, what happened in the past with Peter Seidler. It doesn't matter right now what's going on with Eric Consenta. If they miss the postseason, he's out. If they make the postseason, he continues. We agree. Who disagrees? Not not to me. Uh, Joshua, thank you, man, for following up. He says, sorry, typing on my phone. I'm okay. sure a lot have already said this, but this team still has no fight and still can't win in one-run games. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, it would be fair to have that opinion, Josh. I think your opinion is completely valid. It, it can feel like that a little bit. They've had some tough luck, bad one-run losses already. So they got to prove they gotta they gotta prove they're capable of not being that team. To Josh's point, they need to consistently win some one-run games. They need to overcome deficits, and that's not who they've been as of yet. Yeah, I'm not going to go to the route of this team has no fight. Right. I mean, are they are they battling every battling. single ad battling? Are they battling <laughs> every single at bat. Like, no, it's you're, no, they're not. But they're not as a team collectively like giving up and quitting like last year's team did majority of the time when they went down by a couple runs. Mm -hmm. Like that's not, they're, they're not even close to, I, what I've seen this year, I don't put that on this year's team at all yet. No chance. Yeah. It's way. Uh, yeah. Again, if they were one and 11 right now, right. you know, even like three and nine, yeah. like what the hell is going on? Like this, you can't have a worse start than that. Now, five and seven is not a good start. Let's not get ourselves. It's, it's really not. For the team that's got to get off to a good start, it hasn't been a good start. But it hasn't been a miserable, impossible to dig out of start either. Um, HBVV, thank you. It says, the gambler striked out in Chicago today. Are we talking about Otani? Probably. Dodgers-Cubs. I mean, the Dodgers lost to the Cubs today. Uh, but I want to say I saw Otani had at least a hit or two today. And he did two for fourth and RBI okay. in that eight one Cubs win. Are we talking about Otani? I probably. Probably. Thank you, HBVV. I mean, again, this Cubs series, the reason like you'd like to like to storyline anything. Why are these important? It's April 8th, right? The season's not on the line. But why is this important? Because you're going on the road for six after this. And like Jim said earlier, this series coming up aren't easy including the Cubs series at home. So if you lose a series like this, let's just say you did, it's not getting easier. And all of a sudden, then you're three games under 500, and you're going to Dodger Stadium. Like, And at some point, when are you going to win a series? So it's important because at some point, you got to win a series, and at some point, you got to beat good teams, and you're playing good teams. You can't just say, well, the schedule's tough, so that's why we're losing series. you got to beat good teams too if you're going to be good. So uh, I don't know what to think of it, other than this would be a nice time to win two out of three games. It'd be a very good time, very good right. time to win a series, because that's going to be like the now new running joke is like, can this pod? When's the Padres going to win a series? Like, oh, they don't know win a series. Like, you yep. can't. Last year they had a long stretch to seven, eight, nine, ten series at one point without winning one. Yeah, while it is technically early in the baseball season, um, every game feels like it just matters more. With this team, every win, every win and loss is like it just feels like it matters more because you know they're not a team that's just gonna win a hundred, get out of the bed and win ninety five to hundred games like the Dodgers. They're just not. They gotta work their fucking ass off, and they're gonna be bunched with a bunch of teams in that 83, 84, 85 win, you know, range. When you lose games like today, that hurts, even though it is technically early in the baseball season. Yeah. And like Rich says, I mean, hey, here's a good you know, opportunity with another turn through this part of the rotation to get really good pitching. Let's see if that happens this week against the Cubs at home or not. 
Um, Niles, thank you, man. He says, Padres are a terrible home team. It's good that they're going on the road. Yeah, I don't know. Well, actually Last year, they're actually better at home than on the road, right? They're coming home tomorrow, so. I think he's just saying in general. Because oh, they have six, yeah. I guess six, nine. Yes. Um, I, I want to look that up, though, because they were better at home. I think. I don't know where it's easy to find, but they were better at home last year, weren't they? Marine layer. So. Marine layer. It's always a factor. It is. Um, I could some someone put in the chat if you know what their home and road record was a year ago. They were better at home than they were on the road, I'm pretty sure. Um, right. guys, we've been playing all weekend long with our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Yes. I'll pull up the screen right now. Um by the way, Underdog's been giving out a lot of free pick -em. So you need to you need to sign up right now with promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. You get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Me and Jim are playing, dare I say, religiously at this point. It's We're playing multiple times a day. Yes, it's become our um, lives. Yeah, it's basically like Jim's got two things to worry about, his wedding and Underdog Fantasy. And you have at least one thing to worry about, which is Underdog Fantasy. You're getting a free pick -em. You're getting a 100% match up to $100. If you use promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, click the link in the description down below. Jim, it is so, so easy, is it not? No, it is uh, super easy. It's super fun. And it's not going to break the bank to win a bunch of money. True. Um, like if I am if I just go to tomorrow, right? I just okay. go to... What do you uh, got, MLB? MLB, all right. Okay. I go to the Cubs and Padres game. Let's do it. I'm there on the screen. All right. Um... That's just yeah. What you like? Like here, here's here's an example of how you can win big money. Now it's okay. it's, it's 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 hard to get. Don't, don't yeah, get me you got to get four or five or whatever. But if you do hit it, let me just explain and show you how you will win big money. All right. Okay. Tatis over a half a double. Let's just say he's gonna have a double tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Sure. Um, that's good. Two and a half times. Yeah. Main Machado over. Or uh, oh, higher than uh, one and a half total bases. Okay, it's tough. With you. It's tough, but you know what? I, I believe in Manny. Yeah, you, you can have a double. You can have two singles, a home run. It's more than two, more than one and a half total bases higher than that. Then you have to pick at least one from the opposing team. Yeah, all right. Cody Bellinger hit a home run today. Let's just say, unfortunately, he hits a home run tomorrow. Okay, Boom. three plays. Tatis this 70 times, 70 times. So if I put 10 bucks in, boom, you can win $703 if that hits. Oh yeah. Cause I'm on flex. If I go to stand you right. Yeah. That's a great point, dude. You go three for three here and 10 bucks pays 700. And is it out of the realm to say that Tatis no. could have a double tomorrow? Manny no. could have like a, a double tomorrow and, and, and Bellinger homers. No, Bellinger it's homers. Not. No. So if that happens. And it's just 10 bucks, by the way. We're, we we match your first deposit up to $100. So essentially, you could play $100 with a free money to win real money. Sure. And if you go there right now, use promo code PODSWRAP, like we can we can help make you a lot of money here um, with just doing these $10 bets with these plays. You can win $700. <laughs> like it's just, it's you're crazy. Not break, We've you're had not a couple break, of those. I mean, Jim's had yeah. a couple of those, right? You've had a couple four, five, six hundred dollar wins. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's it's a really good feeling <laughs> when you, yeah. you hit it and you're like, oh my god, I just won four hundred dollars. I mean, you can win more than that, folks. You put you turn that ten into twenty, you get the point. You turn that twenty into forty. I mean, you you yep. can you can take home thousands. Yep, yep. I, it's it's difficult to hit these types of of things, sure. but it's not impossible. Um, hundred percent, it's, it's really not. Like, I can envision a game tomorrow where these things all happen. And a ten dollar bet gets you a seven hundred dollar payout. Now the flex, John, if you hit that flex button right there, yeah, that that still pays thirty five to one. I think. Look, hit, hit the flex button. You go three so for three. You go three fifty one. You go two for three. Pays one seventeen ten. It pays eleven to one, almost twelve to one. Still, that is good That's money. Crazy. Yeah, for you ten dollar so bet. To your point, if we put this down for fifty, you go two out of three, you win five eighty five. Think about that. You put that down for fifty, you're winning five eighty five. You put this down for fifty and you hit it, you win thirty five hundred bucks. And we're all going out for freaking steak tomorrow, except maybe because I'm a vegetarian. Right. I get John the tofu salad, and me and, and me and whoever else get you know the flaming yum. 
So join us. Click the link pinned in the top of the live chat or click the link in the description down below. Remember to use promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, because you're getting a 100% deposit match up to $100. All right, J.D. Gasha, thank you. Says thoughts on Iowa, South Carolina, UConn, Purdue on the uh, men's side. You can hear that game tomorrow in San Diego Sports 760. I think our show is just 90 minutes tomorrow because of it. Because we have pregame coverage, but we're on a three. Oh, I forgot Jonathan. about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's good. I can pick up Jones. It's good. Um, I thought, honestly, I kind of felt bad for South Carolina. They went undefeated this year and they were the sideshow. The whole, the whole tournament, the other yeah. night too, they were the sideshow because you still had UConn in it. Who'd South Carolina beat the other night in the final four? Uh, NC, NC State. State. Nobody cared. Like, it just felt like they were the third biggest story between Iowa, UConn, and South Carolina in the final four. So I feel like that's a credit to them. And then your UConn Purdue. I'm glad we get it. I think it's pretty cool to get number one against number two, at least like in Ken Palm. I still, I still don't see how UConn's getting beat. I just don't see it. It's a fun matchup on paper because you got, you know, uh, Edie versus Klingon and Edie versus, you know, player of the year versus the best team of, of the, you know, going to back-to-back titles here. Mm -hmm. I still think UConn wins that game pretty easily by double digits. I yeah, I think they'll win by 10 in the end. Um, I will disagree with you on this uh, Iowa South Carolina game. Okay, okay, and and this is why I disagree with you. Yes, everyone was talking about Caitlin Clark, but guess mm -hmm. what? It also did for South Carolina. Without Caitlin Clark, you don't get record viewing numbers for this game. That's true. That's true. And to have almost fifteen to tw maybe twenty yeah, million people, probably fifteen to twenty, yeah. watch South Carolina have an undefeated season. Like it doesn't happen without Caitlin Clark. I agree well, with that. everybody was talking about Caitlin Clark, and I get it. Like, you know, hey, look us over here. We 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 went undefeated, won a national title game. Well, guess what? Everyone did see you go. Hey, we're over here because mm -hmm. that that be was because of Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. So, and I think uh, their coach at the end of the game said, kind of, I don't think she said that exactly, but she kind of mentioned how important Caitlin Clark was to the women's game yes. this year. Yep, she thanked her. Yep, yeah. So that's how I view it. And no, I, that's fair. That's that's a fair point. I mean, Caitlin Clark's story is amazing, and her oh, career yeah. is incredible, and her season's even better. With all that being said, I mean, South Carolina has been in four consecutive Final Fours of two national championships. Yet they don't get near the discussion, and, and maybe that's because they're more of a team than Iowa yeah. is. I think Iowa's I was good. Uh, you know, I didn't even know. Like, sorry, I don't watch a lot of women's college basketball, but like. I didn't know that last year Iowa beat South Carolina in the Final Four. Yeah, right. To get to the championship that they lost to LSU. So, like the storylines, they were regardless. Yeah, they were of everywhere. They were everywhere. Yeah, Elite so that, Eight, Iowa, LSU. That, yep. That made it pretty cool. Is like South Carolina avenged last year's loss to Iowa, and oh by the way, it's this is going to be the most watched women's basketball game in like the history of the sport. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, can you? This is has nothing to do with the wrap up show. Maybe it'll be a wrap question tomorrow on John and Jim. I'm just throwing the question out because I'm actually genuinely curious. Can you be the best women's college basketball player ever and not have a ring? Because there's many damn good players at like UConn during their storied yeah, runs. They played players with four rings. Now she's incredible. She's the best scorer in the history of women's college basketball. And I get it. I'm sure I was nowhere near a Final Four without her. And she put in two title games, which is incredible. I'm just, is, are you the best ever? Like, are you saying like women's basketball players? Women's college like, basketball. Women's college. college. Basketball. Women's college. Uh, no, because you have players like Diana Taurasi and I have like four, right? Sue Bird and um, I'm blanking on her name. She was on the pre-show for. She's on the men's side. What's her name? I'm blanking. So yeah, I know hard. What you're talking about who was on the TNT pre-show. Tennessee. She went to Tennessee. Oh my God! Why am I blanking on her name right now? I don't know. Someone help me in the chat. She's on the broadcast. She's on the TNT men's side. She does. She does the Candace Parker. Thank you. Oh yeah, Candace Parker. Candace she Parker. does a nice job on TV. Yeah. Really good job. Um. 
Yeah, she has the most. She has like she's the most accomplished as far as like statistics go, but not like championships. So yeah, no, she's a great player. Um, okay, join us tomorrow, three p.m. San Diego Sports seven sixty. We're talking about Padres Cubs game one of a three game series. Um, as the Padres come back, having having uh, lost a series to the Giants, they're five and seven overall. There, um, it's early, but is it? <laughs> we're not gonna say that. I can't say that. <laughs> Padres Cubs. We'll talk about it tomorrow at 3 p.m. on San Diego Sports 760 and John and Jim. And then join us tomorrow night for a wrap up show right here on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe. All right. Make sure to subscribe. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers this month. We need you to get to 6,000 subscribers. We appreciate you. Please smash the like button. We need 150. What are we at, Jim? Live? Well, John, we are at currently uh, 97. Let's get that thing okay. up to 150 by tomorrow. Um, or there's no show. I like the right name. No, I'm we're not doing the wrap up show anymore. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow regardless. But thank you guys for the subscriptions and the likes. And uh, thank you for the super thanks if you're here on replay. Thank you for your support of our partners. We told you about Underdog Fantasy. If you want to play along, if you want that 100% deposit match, use promo code PODSWRAP, P A D S W R A P. Play along with us, the Padres Pickums. You can play each and every day. Click the link in the description down below. Aura, O R A dot organic. You want to get healthier. ORA.organic plant based nutritional products. And if you have any insurance need, if you want to save $750 or more in your insurance, support our title sponsor on the wrap up show, our good friend Mark Nimitz, who's been with us since day one. Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. Click the link in the description down below. All right, Padres Fall, tough one, kind of heartbreaking today to the Giants 3 2. We'll be back with you tomorrow, right here on the wrap up show, following game one of Padres Cubs. For Jim, I'm John. This has been the wrap up show. Thanks, guys. <laughs>